Welcome to the Branding for Entertainers podcast, the podcast where we explore the art and the science of building a captivating brand in the entertainment industry. Uh, We also talk about your visual, verbal, and your virtual branding. I'm your host, Billy Diamond. Hello, hello. And in today's episode, we're going to delve deep into the importance of a branding guideline sheet for your entertainment business. And we'll discuss why that's crucial and how you can develop your own brand guidelines step by step. And we're also going to tackle the age old question, and that is, is a logo essential for entertainers? And when should you really start thinking about one? So stick around as we uncover the secrets of crafting a memorable brand in the entertainment world. Here we go. One, two, three, Let's kick things off by talking about branding guidelines. Think of your branding guidelines as your rule book or outlining the do's and don'ts when it comes to your visual identity, your messaging, and your overall brand consistency. And you might be saying, well, I don't know, why would I even need a consistent brand? Well, that's a really good question. They've actually done some studies and they kind of have this whole branding thing down to a whole scientific discovery. And that's that if you have consistent branding, it leads to a revenue increase of 23%. So why would you need consistent branding? Well, I think that answers the question that if you're all over the place with your branding, and it's not consistent and the perception that the buyer has about you, uh, you're leaving the possibility of 23% of your revenue on the table. So having that professional look and that brand consistency, here again, I'll keep on stressing that, consistency in the overall look of the brand, the feel, uh, and not here again, not just the logo, not just your visuals, but every element of your branding. If you're not doing this, you're leaving 23% uh, revenue on the table. So let's do this. Let's change that so that you're putting more money in your pocket right here, right now. And I'm going to give you some tips that you can do that. So whether you're a magician, a musician, a comedian, ventriloquist, whatever, or any other type of entertainer, Having a set of these guidelines will really ensure that every aspect of your brand remains cohesive and it resonates with your audience. I see a lot of performers that are just all over the place in their image. And we'll talk about logos in a little bit, but stick with me because having a logo isn't necessarily as essential as you think. In fact, it's more important that you get your branding guidelines correct more than anything. And that's what we want to talk about. So one of the key benefits of a branding guideline sheet is really it's using its consistency. That's really the key. Consistency builds trust and it builds the familiarity with your audience. And uh, those are crucial elements for success in the entertainment industry. So by adhering to your brand guidelines, you're going to establish a strong and recognizable brand identity that really sets you apart from your competition. So you can kind of see the correlation here, how uh, a logo and just having a logo is definitely different than having a brand and branding guidelines. One of the other things about having a branding guideline sheet set up for yourself is I see a lot of entertainers that are just all over the board. So they use this freelancer, this freelancer, this freelancer when it comes to design work. So all of a sudden you just have this hodgepodge of a mess and maybe you can raise your hand and relate to this. And I know this to be true because as long as I've done this and as many entertainers that I've worked with uh, on branding, it seems like they use this person, this person, this person. So a branding guideline sheet is going to be really important. Once you get it all set up, you can pass that off to another uh, freelancer or a graphic designer if you'd like. So every time you use one, they get that branding guideline sheet. So they know what you're about and they can start to draw consistency across the board with your brand. And like I say, this is especially essential if you're using a bunch of different uh, graphic designers and freelancers to help you 
through this process in your entertainment career. Now let's discuss how you can develop your own brand guidelines. And it's a multi-step process, but don't worry, I'm going to break it down for you in five very easy steps. Let's go. One, 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 one. First thing you want to do is you want to define your brand identity. So start by doing that. Start by identifying your brand's mission, your values, and personality. And of course, personality is probably a really big one for a lot of performers and a lot of entertainers because uh, as ext extroverts, you know, we really want our personality to shine through. Even if it's more of a laid back sort of persona, uh, personality means a lot. I want you to also identify what it is that you stand for and also what makes you unique as an entertainer. Think about that for a moment. And don't just say, well, because I do this, this, and this. I want you to really think hard about what makes you uniquely you as an entertainer. This is an area that when you do this, I promise you, it's really hard for people to be in competition with you because there's only one you. There's only, hear me again, there's only one you. And when you find that uniqueness about you as an entertainer and you as a person, I promise you, nobody can compete with that. Nobody in this world. There's only one of you. So anyhow, do that. And then this is really going to be the foundation for what will guide the rest of your branding efforts. So again, uh, your mission, your values, your personality, and also what you stand for and also your uniqueness. Two, two, two. two. The next step is to create some visual assets. What does that mean? Well, we talk about your visual branding here on the Branding for Entertainers podcast, right? Visual, verbal, and virtual. But in regards to creating visual assets, I want you to focus on creating visual assets such as your logos, your colors, and fonts. OK, and maybe you're not there yet. We'll get to that in a moment. But these elements should reflect your brand identity and they really need to resonate with your target audience. And you got two things going on there. When I say your target audience, you have your uh, your live captive audience. Right. And that might be on social media or it's on stage at live events and gigs. But you also have another element of that, and you have an audience that is your buying market. So it's really important early on to figure out, yeah, you really want to be able to target both of them. However, sometimes you maybe want to push a certain show more towards the direction of the buyer making the decision versus the live audience visuals. And there's a lot to unpack there, and it's really different for each performer, so we're not going to get into that. If you need help identifying that, you can reach out to me, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. But for simplicity's sake, just be thinking about that at the moment, that you want a good balance, that it, your branding guidelines and your branding image is going to fit both your buying audience as well as your live audience. Three, three, three. Establish your brand voice, or what I call verbal branding. Develop a tone of your voice that really aligns with your personality. That's key, unless, of course, you have some sort of character or something like that. But uh, as far as a natural speaking voice, develop that voice. So whether you're funny or witty, sarcastic, heartfelt, that guy next door, consistency in your messaging is really key. So let me also point out here that when I say about the voice of your brand, I'm also talking figuratively, but also literally. So both of those things, whether that's the actual your voice voice that you use every day or how you communicate and speak uh, over the Internet or on the phone, whatever those things. But then also the overall voice of your brand. And when I say the overall voice of your brand of how it's conveyed and perceived uh, in written form, like on your website and on social media, etc. So again, uh, the voice of your brand, meaning figuratively and literally. It's also really important to be able to convey that in a branding guideline sheet that you might pass on to somebody else so that they really can easily and quickly identify you and understand you really easily. And it's going to help you all in all keep your messaging clear and concise across the board. Four, four, four. 
Number four, document your choices. So create a style guide with clear usage examples and make it your visual Bible, actually. And this branding guideline sheet, it really should outline how to use your visual elements, the tone of your voice, and also other branding specific guidelines, such as any specific Pantone colors you use, uh, all the way to your costuming that you use in your show. And you can also include a few photos in this document that really best represent who your audience is or who it is you're trying to target. And this document really doesn't need to be complicated. But what it will do, though, is it's going to keep you organized so that when you need a service like branding and marketing or a graphic designer uh, for your business, you can just simply take this pull it as a PDF file and pass this guideline sheet off to that person so that it really paints a clear picture for them really easily. And it's going to save a lot of confusion and possible miscommunication. And it's really going to save time for everyone and more importantly, time for you so that you can focus more on being an entertainer and a performer. Five. 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 Once you have your branding guideline sheet together, share and enforce it. Did you hear me? Enforce it. I believe that, honestly, sometimes the hardest people to enforce this with is ourselves. But I promise you, if you begin to do this, you'll start getting your brand lined up and correct. And I want you to do me a favor. I want you to be sure that everyone representing your brand understands and applies the guidelines. And the biggest thing about it is, is that consistency is key. And I mentioned earlier about I work with a lot of clients who are just all over the place. It's because of a lack of consistency between working with this person, this person, and this person. That's not a bad thing sometimes. I mean, I don't like it personally, but sometimes you're forced to work with other people. And I get it. But this branding guideline sheet the consistency in its use is key. And remember this, that branding guidelines are kind of like a living document. So adapt it as your brand evolves. And by the way, it will. So chances are you might be working on maybe a new show or you're looking to go into a new market. So your brand definitely does evolve and sometimes that's faster, sometimes it's slower, sometimes it depends if you're a professional that's doing several hundred shows a year or you're just a weekend warrior doing a few. It, it's going to be a little bit different for everyone, but I guarantee you, your brand does and will evolve, whether that's in a couple months or a couple years. So do me a favor, take your time, go back and reevaluate this brand guideline document occasionally. Because I want to make sure that you're still on task and that it still aligns with your brand. And you're going to want to do that so that you have that consistency. Again, consistency is key. So with all this talk about a branding guideline sheet, I hope your head's not spinning by now. Or furthermore, I really hope you're not sitting there overwhelmed thinking, I'll never get this, or this is just too much to comprehend. So let's do this. Let's take a step backwards. Uh, I would recommend creating a brand positioning document before working on your full brand guideline sheet. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that you have to know where you're going first, right? In other words, if you were going to be a captain of a ship, sure, you could put your hands on the wheel or on the whatever they call that, the rudder, whatever, and you could steer it, but that doesn't make you a captain, right? You have to learn how to navigate the waters properly so that you can get to your destination safely and effectively. The same really does hold true of your brand, and I believe that one of those first steps, aside from your goals and direction, is to know the voice of your brand. And really, if you're still not quite sure the voice of your brand or how you should portray your image or your brand as an entertainer, well, I have a free resource that I created a couple years ago, and it has hundreds upon hundreds of downloads. And knowing what your brand really means to people is what causes them to buy into you and to want to form a relationship with you and also to remain loyal to you. So... Understanding who you are and what your brand represents is really essential to improving your brand. 
who you work with, and of course, your overall relationships with people. So you can go take my brand personality quiz, and it'll give you some clear direction through a multi-page downloadable PDF. And this quiz is so cool because it will tell you exactly about your personality and how you should start conveying your brand to your audience or to your buyer. And it's really that simple. And you can take that quiz by going to brandingentertainers.com forward slash your brand voice. And there's no spaces in between the words your brand voice. Again, that's branding entertainers.com forward slash your brand voice. Now, once you do this, you'll be able to have some clearer direction to begin setting up your brand positioning document and a one page brand guideline sheet. Now, you might be saying to yourself, I have no idea how to even outline a brand guideline sheet. Now, I personally don't have one that I can offer you because honestly, it's not really a one size fits all sort of thing. And each entertainer is really going to require something a little bit different. And that's depending on where you're at in the industry. However, I will tell you this. There are some really great examples and resources online that can help guide you toward the setup of your branding guideline sheet. And all you really have to do is a quick Google search and just type in branding guideline templates. And it'll give you a bunch of different things. And with one of these templates, you can quickly outline your brand fonts, color palettes and other brand requirements and by the way think of your brand guideline sheet as a simple one page cheat sheet once you have it done once it is set up you can actually keep this on your desktop or even save it to your google drive for easy access and here again know your personality first and then set these things up let's do this let's get back into the show and talk about is a logo really that important Let's talk logos and entertainer success. You might be surprised to hear this from your friendly branding expert here, but a logo isn't absolutely necessary, especially for beginners. Well, why? Because when you're first starting out, you're still trying to figure out who you are as a performer and who your audience is and also what kind of vibe you want to project. And we'll definitely delve deeper into that a little bit later. But back to the question, is a logo essential? A better question might be, is a logo important? Absolutely. But it's really not the only piece of the puzzle. You see, a well-designed logo can definitely boost your brand recognition, but it's not the make or break factor. Believe it or not, there are incredibly successful entertainers out there who don't have logos. However, many of them might admit to lacking a consistent brand image. How do I know this? Because as an industry advisor, I often get requests from them to help them in streamlining their branding. They're killing it out there, of course, but they don't have that distinct identity. And they soon realize that a logo and a cohesive brand image not only make them look more professional, but also elevates how their audience perceives them. Now, you might be thinking, but I got to have a logo. But the reality is, is that your money might be better spent elsewhere at this early stage if you're an early performer. Now, on the other hand, if you're in a position to work with an agency like mine, we can walk you through all the early steps, figuring out who you are, where you want to be, and creating a roadmap to get you there. Now, that's what a branding analysis does, and it's something that I can definitely help you with to take your career to the next level. But Here's the thing. Most young performers and even a lot of seasoned performers, that kind of investment might not be realistic. So what can you do in the meantime? Well, here is a simple solution. Find the perfect font. Find the perfect font that reflects your personality and resonates with your target audience. Don't underestimate the power of typography. Fonts set the tone and they convey personality just like a color palette does. So choose fonts that align with your brand identity and connect with your audience. You'll find that the more you perform, the clearer your brand direction will become. Trust me, if you get a logo designed too early without the expertise of someone like me who really understands branding and marketing or someone who can truly position you effectively, you're going to likely end up scrapping it and starting all over sooner than you think. 
So save your money and focus on marketing for now. In the meantime, use a good font consistently. Pick a main font and then a secondary one that complements it. Websites like thefont.com, that's D-A-F-O-N-T, thefont.com, they'll let you type in your name and they'll show you uh, your name as a preview for thousands of different kinds of fonts from brush and script to serifs and sans serifs. And you'll be able to download those for free. And by the way, thefont.com is not paying me to say this. It's just a great resource that I even use myself. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to remember, if you use something like thefont.com, remember, do your research to choose a font that truly aligns with who you are. So whether you use a logo, a font, or both, the key is to really ensure that they reflect your brand identity and connect with your audience. That's the magic formula. And there you have it, folks. Crafting a compelling brand in the entertainment industry is all about consistency, creativity, and knowing your audience. By developing a branding guideline sheet, you're going to begin to lay the foundation for a strong and memorable brand identity that resonates with your fans and your buyer. So remember, whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just starting out, investing time and effort into your brand is always worthwhile. So grab your pen and paper and start crafting your brand story today. That's all for today's episode of Branding for Entertainers. I'm your host, Billy Diamond, signing off. And until next time, stay creative and keep shining bright in the spotlight. If you're still not quite sure the voice of your brand or how you should portray your image or your brand as an entertainer, well, I have a free resource that I created a couple years ago, and it has hundreds upon hundreds of downloads. And knowing what your brand really means to people is what causes them to buy into you and to want to form a relationship with you and also to remain loyal to you. So understanding who you are and what your brand represents is really essential to improving your brand who you work with, and of course, your overall relationships with people. So you can go take my brand personality quiz, and it'll give you some clear direction through a multi-page downloadable PDF. And this quiz is so cool because it will tell you exactly about your personality and how you should start conveying your brand to your audience or to your buyer. And it's really that simple. And you can take that quiz by going to brandingentertainers.com forward slash your brand voice. And there's no spaces in between the words your brand voice. Again, that's brandingentertainers.com forward slash your brand voice.